Welcome to NAB. So it's great to be here with everyone again. So I've got a little case of the NAB voice. So, um, so we've got a few things we've been working on and we wanted to update you. Uh, so we'll get straight into it. Um, so as you know, uh, about a month or so, we released um, ATM TV Studio HD. Um, now, it's a, I mean, it's, it's gone very well for us. And um, it's, you know, it's a very small switcher. It's um, fantastic for web broadcasters, but as well as traditional broadcasters. And it's very feature packed. But uh, that was almost the small version of it. What we wanted to do is build it into a control panel. So what we're going to be announcing today is ATM TV Studio Pro HD. It's actually the same switcher that's built into this control panel. Um, and it's, uh, if you look at it, it's got professional buttons. It's, there's nothing limited about the uh, switcher at all. It's got the same buttons the high end switchers have. Uh, in fact, I'll show you another view of it. It's completely self-contained. So you can just plug in a monitor and it, and it works as the multi-view. It's actually the same feature set as the TV Studio Pro. Um, sorry, the Gate in TV Studio, because it's the same switcher internally. Um, and if you can see the, uh, but it's got a, obviously more features on it. Um, if you look at the uh, front panel, there's the buttons. So it's got a full program preview. Row. So it's much more of a professional switcher. And we've also designed it to be the same connection, uh, the controls as a professional 1ME panel. So. A lot of entry level uh, people use switches like this. I mean, it's a really professional switcher, but it's also used by people you know, coming up. So when they learn, they learn a proper one of me approach. It's not a dumbed down plastic switcher. It's you know, die cast metal, it's really good quality. And you can see the uh, buttons, the select bus on there. One thing we have done on this switcher is it's got the audio level adjustments on every input. The other switch you had to push one of the inputs and then you could adjust it on the master control. This one's got independent controls for every input. And we've done a, f a few other cool things. It's got a full CCU in it. So what you can do along the top there is you can grade the cameras um, that are connected to it. It's got four uh, uh, program outs that you can connect to the cameras. The other smaller TV studio model can do that. But this one, you can actually take control of the camera. So it's got iris and focus adjustments, lift gun again, there's a trackball for doing color bounce. You can even adjust the lens. There's iris and focus. You can see there's a whole bunch of different buttons for the uh, transitions. You can just select the transitions directly. And just down the bottom there, you can see there's a picture-in-picture -picture buttons to preset the DVE because it's got a DVE built in. Um, and it's got the aux out. So you can see the back panel actually looks very similar to the other switcher. Uh, on the left-hand side, you've got the full HDMI in. There is actually both a DC input on this switcher and also AC input. So you can actually have redundant power or even run it off a battery. There's the serial port for controlling PTZ cameras or the switcher can be controlled. You've got the four SDI inputs. It's got eight inputs total. There's the four run uh, program outs for controlling cameras with mix minus as well. It's still on that. Then you've got the aux out, uh, program out, multi view, analog audio, and, and the talkbacks on the back. So I don't know, we think it'll be a pretty nice switcher. It's something that we haven't really had before. It's uh, a lot of switcher in a small design, and it uh, fits within a rack unit. It's got the bolt attachments on the bottom so you can screw it down to a shelf. Uh, or, you know, in a lot of community organizations, they don't want you know, things stolen so they can bolt them to a shelf. Um, you can see it's fantastic for live production. Just plug a few cameras in and multi-view and go. So I think it's, uh, hopefully it does quite well. Um, it's, uh, we think, quite affordable considering it's uh, $2,295. It'll be available in May. The software actually for it will go up today because it's finished, but we've got to wait a few weeks for the metal materials to come in. So we'll start uh, production. So it's uh, very close. We've got a whole lot of them on the booth on the front. So hopefully it goes well. Um, now, one, uh, there's a couple of other quick updates before I get to DaVinci, which is really the big thing that we wanted to talk about. We've got a very different track for DaVinci this year. So one thing we have done is there's a software update going up today that lets the, you know, we did these wonderful uh, control panels for DaVinci, and they've been very popular. But the micro panel actually now works with the Atem switcher, so you can actually color grade your cameras. So if you plug this pan the control panel into the Atem software, you can now grade the cameras. And uh, In fact, we've done it on some of the cameras we're using here, and it looks wonderful. So that's a nice update um, that should be available today, or well, will be available today. It's uh, ATEM Software 7.1, and of course the panel's 995, so I think it'll look, it'll look really nice actually next to the TV Studio Pro. I think it'll be nice. A couple of other updates we've done, I'll move them fairly quickly. Um, we've got an update for WebPresenter. Uh, WebPresenter actually has a switcher in it, 
so you can switch between the sources. Uh, the problem is if it's, it's got an audio mixer in it, but we didn't have any menus to control it. So we've taken the uh, audio mixer menu from the Atom switches and put it into the web presenter. So you can set all the different levels. You can do uh, audio follow video, and you can move um, you know, as you switch between sources. And uh, so that's pretty nice. Um, and that update will be available in about a week or so. We had a last minute bug, so we had to pull that. We have it for the show, but we'll be in about a week or so. Um, we've also got an update for Blackmagic Duplicator. The problem with Blackmagic Duplicator is we did H.265, which is fantastic compression format. It gets us uh, not much bigger than HD files, but you can do Ultra HD with it. The problem is it's not adopted everywhere, so you can't really sell that content to people because there's a chance they can't play it. So we've done H.264 for that Blackmagic Duplicator, uh, and that'll be available today as a free update. And what that means is you can record H.264 files, which everyone can read. And in fact, at the end of the event, we've got uh, some duplicators running over there. So if you guys want to pick up a copy of the, uh, of the press conference in Ultra HD, we can just give you one of the cards, and that's in H.264. So you'll be able to read it. So I don't know what's happened with H.265. and We've still got it in the product. There's some license licensing issue or something like that. We're not quite sure. But not all the platforms have it. So hopefully it gets adopted, because it, it's a hugely efficient uh, compression format. Just got to wait for things to move on. We moved a little bit quick on that one, I think. So, But yeah, we've added H.264 now. And next, we've got some nice updates for Video Assist. Um, what we've done is we've added 10 languages to Video Assist. So with the Video Assist utility, when you plug the thing into the USB, and we'll show this on the booth, you can then uh, pick which language you want. And we've got 10 languages in there. That's French. This is Japanese. And there's an example of Russian. So we've got, uh, you can see the list of languages there. Chinese, English, French, German, Japanese, Korean, Portuguese, and Russian, Spanish, and Turkish. Um, and all you need to do is just select that, and you can make the uh, video assist work in the native language. Now, that update is available today as a free update, and it works with both video assist models. Uh, but we also haven't stopped there. We've been doing a few other things with video assist. We've added scopes into the video assist 4K model, and we'll be showing that on the booth as well. So it makes a fantastic little uh, you know, portable scope even for broadcasters. I don't, you could use it on cameras. I actually want to use the Prey display when I'm grading on a monitor. I just have that sitting there, so you don't need to use an overlay. Um, you can see we've got Waveform, and we've got RGB Parade, which I think is a really nice scope. And it shows a legal level, so you can see it goes off the outside the RGB range. We've got Vector Scope, and we've also got uh, Histogram. Kind of funny to have two histograms on the screen, but the big histogram makes it fantastic for doing exposure when you're you know, working with cameras. So that's on the... Uh, oh, there's a couple of other features I can see there. almost forgot to mention them. You can, do, you can keep the picture up. Uh, you can bring that up. It's a little bit big there, actually. The real one's a little bit smaller. But you can bring the uh, picture view. But also what's nice is you can blend between the... So there's actually some adjustments. You can blend the amount of scope versus picture and sort of set it so you can actually have uh, almost a watermark scope. So it kind of makes it nice. You can still use the, the, uh, the video view and still use the scope sort of together. So that's kind of cool. So that update will be available. We're showing it on the booth. It'll be up update in probably June. Um, we've got it on the booth on a bunch of units, so people can check it out and have a play, and we'll get that out soon. Uh, the other new product we're doing is uh, Ultra Studio HD Mini. Um, now, what we've done, we've got a lot of capture playback products down sort of in that lower end area, and what we want to do is replace some of those. So we've looked at things, you know, people don't need to use a capture playback device to capture stuff from old broadcast decks anymore for editing, but they do bring stuff in archiving. So we've changed some of the connectors around and what we're doing with this, it's a Thunderbolt 3 product and it powers from Thunderbolt 3, so it's a modern design, but no one needs analog out anymore, so we've looked at, you know, changing some of the connections. And if you look at the back, we've got uh, dual link SDI out so we can do live broadcast graphics because it does fill and key, but at the same time we've got analog in and analog audio in, and SDI in and a deck control connector, so you can use it for archiving off all decks, analog SP decks, DigiBetas, things like that, because that's what people need to use. But in more modern applications as well, people need to use HDMI and SDI for monitoring to get accurate AV sync. Also, some people can use this with like software like Open Broadcaster for streaming. So that's also nice. So it does a whole lot of different combinations, but it's in a Terranex Mini size, so you can rack bound it. Um, you can also put the Terranex Mini smart panel on the front, you can get some status information. There's even a buffer number, so you can actually see how many buffers are being used in playback or how many empty buffers you've got in record. So it gives you a bit of a status feedback. So if, you know, if you've got any disk issues, a lot of broadcast guys want to know how healthy the whole stack is when they're playing off air. So this gives you a bit of information about the health of the, this system you've got. Uh, so a little bit of status, nerdy status information there, but it's kind of useful for broadcast guys. 
So that product is available today. It's uh, 495, um, and uh, so it's in stock. So another quick announcement we've got: um, we've lowered the price on Ultimate. Um, the Ultimate we acquired about six months ago, and we've put the product back into our production systems, and we've got the price down to nine, well, basically ten thousand dollars, you know, five dollars less than ten thousand dollars. It was when we originally bought it at twenty-seven thousand dollars. So. Generally, people have used them with virtual sets, and a lot of people who love Ultimate have used it for years, just swear by Ultimate. But what we wanted to do is I feel there's a whole lot of new area that people can use if you use high quality matte paintings and put an Ultimate on each camera. Then you could have even still cameras. You can actually use still uh, locked off cameras. If you don't move the camera on air, you can actually use a still frame, which means you could use a high quality matte painting. So I, I'm very interested to see what happens if more people start to use Ultimate with more cameras on a set. If you, you, know, if you have more cameras, you don't need to move the one camera you can just cut from camera to camera, but then you can put backgrounds in, which are matte paintings. So you can get quite photorealistic compositions in many ways. But the problem is Voltamat was too expensive to do that. You couldn't afford to have one on every camera because it would have cost a lot of money. So by reducing the price, we're hoping it makes it a bit more affordable for people to use one on each camera. And we'll keep working that and, and you know, keep work those workflows. That's something we've also done uh, today. So now let's get to DaVinci. Um, I've got a little bit of camera news, but I'll do that after this. Um, but DaVinci, last year we public beta DaVinci, um, and the reason for that is we wanted a full year, and in fact, there was 12.5 because we only had a small update, but it turned out to be a much bigger update than we thought. But what we really were doing this time last year was working on DaVinci 14. So, you know, for years we've owned DaVinci, we've improved it a lot, and everyone's come up to us and said what they needed, and we've just been busy adding those things. But at the same time, Blackmagic was started. The reason this company exists is to solve big problems that we had in the TV industry. It started with capture cards because that's what we needed to solve. We needed to do editing systems and design. So I felt like, you know, in some ways we've been busy just keeping everyone happy with DaVinci. We didn't have a chance for us to actually do some big leap. And we looked at this and we thought, well, what's the big problem we really have in workflows? Um, and that's what we really wanted to solve. We feel like there was three big problems. One of them was kind of a problem that DaVinci had, and the other thing, uh, you know, things were something we could solve in the industry itself. So, you know, the big. Um, issue that we also had to solve was performance. I mean, we don't have 10 gigahertz processors and 15 gigahertz processors. The computer industry hasn't speed it, sped up the way it was. And the reason for that is, is the computer industry has been focused on low power. I mean, you know, remember it was only a couple of years ago we all used to sit in a conference room and everyone's plugging in their power adapters trying to keep their laptops alive because no one would sit through an hour meeting without plugging in your power. Nowadays our laptops last all day. So you can see what the computer industry has been focused on and we all benefit from that. But the problem is we have to not just assume the processes are going to get faster under us. So we're getting about 10 times performance in DaVinci now. There's been all kinds of stuff we're doing. I'm not going to you know, waste time by going through all the detail, but it's extremely fast now. Uh, playing HD64 is really quick, and even on laptops. So it's, it's really exciting. All exhibitors. The show so, floor will open so, but the big thing we've done, that's quite distracting. So the big, the, the big thing, no, not, please not once again. Um, so the thing we've, but the big thing we really could solve, the big problem that we could really solve, we felt was audio. I mean, we didn't feel there was any audio for the film and television industry. There's fantastic tools, but they're music industry tools. That's the culture of the audio tools in this industry. We felt like we needed something for film and television, and that's what we really wanted to focus on. We felt that that was the big problem to solve. We didn't want to have to you know, export our project out, send it over to a music industry guy, and then bring it back. Now, they're great guys. They've got good tools, but, you know, they've got to... You get your project back, you put it in, and if you want to keep editing, then you've kind of screwed up the sync. You've got to lay it against the timeline. It's really difficult. So we felt audio was the big thing. So what we've done is we've built Fairlight Audio. We went and acquired Fairlight. We built Fairlight into DaVinci Resolve. So it's got a full audio post-production environment. I mean, it's, it's crazy. I mean, when, when Apple launched the iPad, and it was like a 1,000 songs in your pocket, this thing will play back a 1,000 tracks in real time, together, all at the same time. It'll record 96 channels. I mean, remember the voiceover tool? This will record 96 channels while playing back 150 channels and mixing them all down with no latency, all in real time. I mean, you could record 10 orchestras and just, you know, while playing back another 10, it's nuts. You know, it's really funny. So it's extraordinary power, and every single channel has got compressor limiter, six-band parametric EQ, all that processing built into every single channel. Um, you get about 60 uh, channels playback on a normal computer, but if you add the accelerator card, you get 1,000. It's amazing. So. We think this is a big thing, plus it runs in the consoles. So, of course, the thing about that, though, with great editing and great color correction and then having audio built in, the other side of that problem is collaboration. So with DaVinci Resolve, now you can collaborate and work together um, as, a, as, a, as a sort of a you know, community in your facility. 
So if you look on the slide there, you can see there's you know, bin locking and all those other features that you expect, but there's also things like timeline compare. You can actually compare two timelines. Someone can duplicate off a timeline, keep working, and then you can you know, compare the timelines and submit those changes in. There's even a secure chat where you, can, you, know, you can see the secure chat window. All these production systems, it's one of the reasons I don't like cloud-based licensing. All the production systems and high facilities have shut the internet off. Nobody has the internet connected to those systems because they can be hacked in. You know, remember the North Korean hack, for example. Nobody, everyone's petrified of that. So high-end systems, and the problem is DaVinci's a high-end system. It might be affordable, but it's also still a high-end system that's used in major films. We can't have those connected to the internet, so we can't, that, that does require, you know, create differences for us, differences in the way we have to work. So having, you, know, you can't just use Slack or Skype to do chatting between people if you've got the internet shut off. So having secure chat internally means you can talk between each other uh, as a large group. And not only that, we will, not in the public beta, but we will have that chat saved into the project. So you can even open up a project here later and see the chats that happened. Um, so I think it's going to be, that combination is really powerful. Having the collaboration and the audio, allowing you know, people can edit, multiple editors can edit the same timeline while it's being audio mixed and color corrected all on the same job on the same timeline. It's extraordinarily powerful. Um, so that's what the window looks like. You can see there's an audio mixer. You can see the timeline with all the tracks, and there's a uh, uh, channel uh, data, uh, meters across the top. And of course, it's integrated into DaVinci, so you get all the power of having all that video infrastructure underneath. Um, if you're running two monitors there, you can spread it out. That's like the left monitor would be all the timeline, and the right monitor would be all the mixer. Um, and of course, the other really nice thing is uh, the consoles. So you can see we've got a 3.3-bay console here. This is a 5-bay console. Now, DaVinci's actually running the console. That's the funny thing about this. DaVinci's actually now, it's not the Fairlight software, it's actually Fairlight's in DaVinci and it's running this console. So here's the 3.3 bay. If I go to this, hit play, and the latency is extremely low. One from impossible. So you can see it's very low latency. But what's also amazing is, and the great thing about, um, one of the big things, you know, I mean, what is audio for film and television? Well. Of course, it's all 3D surround sound. You've got 5.1, 7.1, and even 22.2 surround sound, all natively built in there. But you know, even if you look at the differences between the audio industry and the, uh, like the music industry and the film and, tele uh, film and television industry, I mean, you know, we've got, instead of a, a, a song, what you've got is you know, hundreds of clips on a timeline, uh, you know, dozens of audio channels on each clip. I mean, you could be doing an hour-long episode of that five episodes a week. I mean, it's, it's very different the way the workflow is. So we really do think, and of course you've got different requirements even in the consoles, we really do think that you know, the film and television industry people have only had options that are hundreds of thousands of dollars up until now. They need something dedicated for what they do, something that collaborates in with the editing systems and the color correction systems. But at the same time, we haven't closed any of that off. We still also round trip between other apps because that's also what's needed. So the whole thing just has to work. So, I mean, people don't even work the same hours in film and television that they do in the music industry. It's just very different. So I think, you know, this, this will be hopefully really beneficial. But you can see an advantage of the surround sound. I mean, I've got a timeline playing here. There's surround sound clips in here. And you can see the whole console running. That's DaVinci Resolve's audio page. And these are just surround sound clips combined with other so surround sound channels combined with other channels. And you can move using the controls, you can move things anywhere in you know, 3D surround space, surround sound space, so it's pretty nice. And you've got all the video integrated in. Latency is really low, it's, it's really nice. Um, so you can see the consoles. We don't actually have the pricing on the consoles yet. That's the one bit we're a bit behind in. So there's a two-bay console. Um, we've got the, uh, also a desktop-based version of that. What we're going to do is we're going to sell these as modules. So people will be able to buy the various modules and assemble it themselves, or the dealer will be able to assemble it. But what that'll mean is you could start off with the, two, with the desktop console, and there's two examples here. One of the things that's very powerful about Fairlight is that editing controller console. That actually will control the whole of the Resolve. In fact, to really demonstrate what's going on here, this here, actually I'll go to the color page. That's the color page on DaVinci Resolve. It really is DaVinci Resolve running this. So. And what this means is you can start off uh, with DaVinci Resolve, get going with the audio, then you could add the edit controller or the, the fader panel, um, and then if you decided you're getting bigger and you're getting a bit more work, you can buy a desktop con uh, floor-mounted console and, uh, and take those modules out and move them up into that floor console. So you can actually upgrade and bring the modules with you to the point where you've got you know, a bunch of uh, friends have now become a professional business, got large consoles, and you're upgrading them, and 
And uh, you know, I think it'll be really nice. I think it's a nice way to work. It gives people a lot of flexibility. So you can see the, uh, the control is wonderful, flying faders. So as you adjust everything and you wind back and play, they're all adjusting. So it's really, you know, so it's a great advantage of buying Fairlight. That's why we did that. We wanted to do the audio, but we're like, you know, we don't want to spend three years doing audio because we do it first version, come here, make mistakes, people update us on what we need to do. We could just do it really well right from the start. And it's all, of course, it's all HD audio. It's really powerful. This is the edit controller there. Um, really nice control. So what I'll do is I'll do a quick demo. I'm not a slick demo guy, but I'll show you just a couple of things in the uh, software. So we can switch over to the uh, software app. So now, I'm not a slick demo guy, so it's probably gonna go horribly wrong. If you see fire, let's all run. So, <laughs> but I can show you quick things. I felt it was, instead of just talking about software, let's show you a few things. So you can see the performance is much faster. Um, and you know, like you know, what I can do is if I go to a H64 timeline here, I've got four H64 clips. Uh, and I actually ran this on a laptop, perfectly fine. And if I play those, they're all playing together. Um, for H64 files, so that's not a problem anymore. It's really very quick. We've also got a bunch of um, filters in the timeline. So if I go to the, uh, say so this clip here, I can go to the effects library. There's a whole bunch of effects in here, but I've got my little favorite one down here. I can drag that on. This is one of the new effects that's in there. If I go into the inspector, I can play around with the filter settings, but I can just play that. So we've got a lot more filters in DaVinci Resolve. If it was possible well. to shoot it, we wanted to go shoot it. Um, what I can also do is, uh, well, I'll show you the audio page. Let's check that out. So there it is. Now, if you look around the audio page, you can see I've got an audio mixer over here. Um, I've got the uh, meters at the top here. So if I play, it just plays. I've got the video here. In the age of airplanes, we've become explorers once again. Awesome. I just still can't quite believe that this is actually all in here. We've only owned Fairlight for six months. It's like, I mean, we did a lot of the stuff we did before six months ago was actually all the other things we needed to do, but all that audio stuff's happened in six months. The engineering team have just, these guys are insane. You know, it's fantastic, you know. And the UI team and everyone, everyone's come together. You know, when you do an acquisition, most people can't even integrate the companies in over a year or more. But to, everyone just immediately got together and started working together and there's all the challenges and difficulties, but it was so exciting and fantastic. You know, it's just, what a wonderful team. So it's, it's really nice to use it even from a software point of view. If I click on the channels here, on the, on, the, on the mix, you can see it actually selects the channels in the timeline here. And I can also come along here and select them and you can see they're selected up the top. If I double click a clip here, um, I can expand it out like that. I can even expand it right out to the sample level. And I can even adjust the sample. So if you really want to put a lot of clicks in your audio, you can even adjust to the sample level. So it's pretty cool. Um, and you can just hit Shift N, go back, uh, Shift Z, go back to normal. So all those tools work. Uh, if I look over the mix here, I've got, I've got this is the uh, parametric EQ, and there's six bands, and each channel has one of these. So I can just move it around. Oh, he might be. It's pretty cool. I can come in here. I've got dynamics, so I can turn on expander. Compressor, limiter, it's just, it's all there. Uh, even if you had a thousand channels of this. This is the 3D surround space. This is a very powerful feature. You don't have to try and trick it into doing 3D surround sound. You can actually move the uh, audio around just as easy as that. In fact, on the console, there's even got an air pan thing. You just move your hand around it. It'll just move the sound in 3D space all around the room. It's really cool. Um, and it can even do 22.2 surround sound, which is something that Fairlight and worked in with NHK to develop, so it's really immersive sound environments. Um, so what we can also do is, let's check out the color page, because that's a good thing. And we have the, um, so let's check, yeah, this is cool. So obviously what we've also done is we've added a lot of extra plugins and, and features. And one of the coolest ones is, Something everyone's always doing is uh, treating faces. So we've actually got a, a filter now that does that. So I'll go up into here and let me uh, open up my open effects. So we've got this cool face refinement filter. So I'll drag that onto the node. And there's another cool feature I've got as well. Um, we can, uh, you know how we used to go command F, oops, 
and we could bring up full screen. And on the uh, resolve panels, there's a button that brings up full screen, so you can use a laptop to grade into the monitor. Well, now we've actually added scopes. So you can bring scopes up and engrave with the scopes on that screen. But we've got another version of the full screen. If you go Shift F, you can leave the parameters up, so you can do parameter adjustments with a large view. So this is the face um, refinement filter. Let's analyze his face. Look at that, it's found his face, and now it's basically tracking, analyzing and tracking his face. And so then we can start to do treatments to his face. So you can see it's, it's basically, it's, um, so there's his, his face. I can actually turn off the overlay. So let's do some stuff. So you can sharpen, soften, sharpen facial features. But it actually, it's deconstructed the face. So if I look here, I can go into eye retouching. I can sharpen his eyes, or even make him look a bit, a bit <laughs> demonic. So it's quite funny. Like, I mean, I'm being nuts here. You'd never do this, but well, maybe you will. It's going to change horror movies for the, for the fact. Let's go to his lips. So I mean, you can even give him some lipstick, you know? So it's pretty funny. Let's uh, change the hue. That'll be weird. <laughs> Looks like he's eating a Smurf. So, so it's really quite nice. Um, so it's cool. I love this. So it's, uh, there's a lot of uh, filters in here. You can see, in, if you look in the, uh, in the plugins, there's a lot of, um, uh, we've added a lot of different types of filters and they're both in the edit page and the color page now. Um, so let's have a quick look at the, uh, on the edit page. So focus, for example, this is a quick example and that's the last thing I'll show of the uh, collaboration. So I've got a uh, timeline here, this one here. Um, this is a, and it, oops, I've just changed my timeline. I don't want to do that. Uh, I think I've screwed myself up. Let's go back to that one. That's the one I was editing. So this is my timeline with the Smurf eater. Now, say for example, someone else wanted to work on this timeline. They wanted to edit it. What they can do is duplicate the timeline and do some changes. The problem is I need to see what changes they've done. So in that case, all I need to do is go down here to the timeline, uh, this one here, and I can go, compare with current timeline. And here is a comparison of those two timelines. So the top timeline is his work, and the bottom timeline is, is my edit. So what I can do then is I can go, okay, I like that edit, I'm gonna accept it, so I just go accept. So I think it's a, a pretty powerful update. Um, I mean, it, it, to me, it's, it, hopefully, we hope that it changes the way, things. if we can go back to the slides. Um, I really hope that uh, we can make some big changes to the way that the, the industry works and make things a lot easier for people who are collaborating and doing their own audio post. We can have a whole new generation of people actually finishing audio in the film and television industry. And, you know, and, the, and the tools can also adapt and grow natively for the film and television industry because we're not really doing the music industry. Although, obviously, you, know, you can use them for that, but it's really focused on the problem we're trying to solve, the big problem we felt like we could solve. And, and it's exciting to do that is the audio side of film and television. So we can hope, really hope we get some nice... Uh, you know, I mean, I can't wait to see the workflows evolve. You know, it's like everything, you do these things, like now we have to wait for everyone else to do those workflow changes and then you know, come back to us and let us know what's next, you know. So the other thing, we're doing a couple of big things with the, uh, the software, all this audio stuff, and some of the plugins are actually included in the free version, and that public beta will, will be available today. So, you know, and, but at the same time, the audio stuff is a little new, so I think you know, there's a couple of things in the audio that aren't finished and not really quite at public beta level, the rest of it is, um, there was, I think, some kind of transition that wasn't in there, crossfades or something like that wasn't in there yet. So people have to bear with us over the next couple of weeks as we do a couple of little updates to get a bit more of the audio in there. But we felt if we got the public beta out with the audio in it, it also meant that everyone can try it out and then just come and brain dump to us, particularly even at the show, if there's anything we're missing or any little thing we might have missed, because that's what we really want to do now. And we've got all the guys at the front, multiple consoles, so if anyone tries it and they're like, hey, there's a thing they should add or change this slightly, Come and brain dump. You know the community can actually help us yeah, get to final. Version, um, so the free version is, is going to be available today. It'll have audio in it. But the other show. thing we've done is the, the full DaVinci Resolve Studio with all the plugins open. and everything have is being reduced in price to two ninety nine. So we now have it. it's much more affordable. I think it'll help lower end people much more. And that'll be available uh, today uh, as well as a public beta. So that'll be good. And also, the other thing we're doing is we're getting rid of the dongle from the point you don't have to use the dongle anymore. Now it works much better with laptops, you don't have to do that. Uh, but you, we'll, we'll probably still have the dongle. A lot of larger facilities are not on the internet near, you know, would like the dongle or people that move around systems. So we'll retain that, but natively it won't have the dongle. You won't, you just be able to use a registration code. Um, 
So that's pretty nice. So there's one last little bit of news. Um, Ursa Mini Pro has been doing very well and, and everyone's been very happy with it. But it had a hidden secret feature that we didn't tell anyone about because we just hadn't had quite enough time to support it. But we've actually got Bluetooth in, DaVinci, uh, in the Ursa Mini Pro. So what's really nice about that is we've got a nice little app that uh, we can talk to the camera with and we're going to ship. There it is, it's an iPad app. So you can do all the control, you can record. Um, and also you can do meter data as well. So there you can see the meter data window. Now what's really cool about this is not only will it control the cameras, but we're also going to make this app control multiple cameras. So we can do like a hybrid production. You can set up the cameras like studio cameras, but you can use the iPad to record multiple cameras so that you've actually now going on a multiple media. Then you can use the, um, the uh, what's the name? Uh, what do you, <laughs> they call the editing thing, I've like brain warped. You know where you put all the frames of the uh, multi, uh, multi-cam in the uh, DaVinci. Well, that's actually much faster too because of the performance improvements in DaVinci. So I think that'll be nice to have this sort of hybrid workflow where it's actually like, it's as fast as doing live production, but you're recording it all, so you get the accuracy of doing post-production, but it's very, very fast. So the iPad can trigger off, keep all the meter data the same, trigger off all the cameras. Also, we're gonna make that uh, an API available, so it's, the control protocol is very similar to the SDI control protocol. And so if anyone wants to develop with it, they can write their own control applications. And we're going to give away that source code to that app so people can just use it um, and, and learn how we've talked to the camera with our app and then do their own customization. Because I think there's all kinds of things we haven't really thought about that people could do. Like, for example, downloading the uh, location data and time synchronization, things like that. So I think there'll be a lot of interesting things people can do. So that'll be available June. We're showing it out the front, but it's not quite ready yet, but it'll be around about June. So it's a good opportunity to show people here that. So that's mostly what we've got for this show. And um, like, again, thanks for supporting us. We really appreciate everyone doing that. We've got uh, some recordings of the, uh, uh, the event if anyone wants it. Also, I'm gonna hang around a little bit. So if anyone's got any questions, please come up. And if anyone's watching, the, we're actually streaming this. So if anyone's watching the video stream, where in a couple of moments we're going to play the What's New Individual Resolve video. So um, if anyone's watching the stream, stay around for that. So there you go. Thanks.